Do you see your hairline disappearing and you're not sure why or those edges are just getting thinner and thinner and you can't figure out how to restore your edges or your hairline? Well, this video is for you. Hey guys, Karen from Curl House. I'm a licensed cosmetologist, a certified trichologist, and the owner of the Curl House Hair Restoration Collection. And today we are going to talk about your edges your hairline and how important it is to both prevent thinning edges and if you're dealing with thinning edges, how to restore them. So let's get started. The first thing you need to know is why are your edges thinning in the first place? So I'm going to categorize three reasons why you may be dealing with thinning edges. The first one is a hair loss disorder called frontal fibrosing alopecia. That means it's hair loss right around the hairline from ear to ear. This disease is a scarring alopecia. So it typically affects women who are in the menopausal age and it's autoimmune. So the body is attacking the hair follicle, causing the hair follicle to die. This type of alopecia is diagnosed at a dermatologist's office. So you have to get a biopsy, but that's the first one, frontal fibrosing alopecia. So the second two types of hair loss are a little more common, and I'm gonna categorize those as hormonal hair loss and traction hair loss. So hormonal hair loss is more internal. So it's a result of something that's happening, happening internally, particularly to your hormones, like um, women who are going through menopause and there's a rapid decrease in the estrogen and progesterone levels. They may experience uh, hair loss around the hairline or even hair loss or all over or I see this a lot women who are pregnant when they go through their pregnancy and sometimes their hair will just shoot out and it gets thick and full and fabulous and then after they have the baby and their hormones start to rebalance their hair will start to come out or what I see a lot is that hairline comes out I see it a lot uh, after women have children, they lose their hairlines or they have temple hair loss. So that's what I'm going to call hormonal hair loss. Now, the last type of hair loss that may be affecting you related to the edges is what is very, very common. And it is called traction alopecia. So traction alopecia is trauma to the hair follicle that is induced by something you do. So it's something what I call mechanical damage, typically from the hairstyles we wear, the tight braids that we wear, wearing a wig too long or too often, um, tight Afro puffs, even styles where you don't add extensions like braided styles and twisted updos and all the fancy styles that we do with our natural hair. Over time, that can cause traction alopecia. It's trauma to the hair follicle because of the pulling from the hairstyle. This is very, very common in our community, traction alopecia. So I'm gonna to talk to you about what you can do to potentially restore your hairline if you are dealing with particularly the last two. Remember that first one, you definitely need to get a, a biopsy from your dermatologist to see if it's FFA. But the second two, I'm gonna talk about more extensively. I'm gonna tell you my formula to restore thinning edges or a thinning hairline. And my formula is to decrease inflammation and increase circulation. Let me say that again. You want to decrease inflammation, that's infl inflammation on the scalp and also within the body, and increase circulation. So increase the blood circulation that's flowing to your scalp to stimulate growth. So the first one, you have to say goodbye to tight hairstyles. That includes braids with or without extensions, sew-ins that are too tight, wearing a wig for too long, pressing on your hairline, Afro puffs that are slicked back, that are super tight, uh, twisted up dudes, like all of these styles that tug on your hairline. If you are dealing with traction alopecia, you just have to give all of these hairstyles a break even if the tension is mild, because if you're wearing tight hairstyles back to back, back to back, 
even if it's mild tension, repeated mild tension becomes greater tension. So you're gonna have to say goodbye to these tight hairstyles. I snapped this picture of my niece many years ago. You can see all of this extension hair that's added on to her natural hair. Can you see the weight of the extension hair, how much weight it is putting on the hair follicle? That's an example of what not to do. That's what creates inflammation. So again, we have to decrease inflammation. And the way to decrease inflammation is not wearing the hairstyle that creates the inflammation. So in this case, it's the braids. Other times I see people with braids and they have like bumps all over the hairline. That is not cool. Those bumps is an indication. It's inflammation and an indication of what may follow. That is traction alopecia. So if you have a hairstyle, and if you get a hairstyle, if you have a headache, uh, if you have bumps, then that's an indication that it's too, lot, too tight, it's creating inflammation. So that hairstyle has to go. Even wigs, like y'all know I keep it real. For those of you who are curious, this is a wig. I wear a wig from time to time. Actually, I just corrode my hair and slap this wig on. I'm training for a half marathon. And this week, I was not in the mood to deal with my hair. So I slapped this wig on. But guess what? I only wear my wig one or two hours a day when I do wear it. I mean, quite frankly, I just slapped it on for this video. <laughs> but you can wear the wig, but do it in moderation. So don't keep the wig on for three or four weeks at a time and never take it off. That's going to put tension on your hairline and that is going to lead to traction alopecia. So do it in moderation. Okay, and secondly, another way we can attack that inflammation, we can attack it internally in the body. So in other words, that means you have to be mindful of what you eat. A healthy diet full of antioxidant foods will help to decrease inflammation in the body. What increases inflammation in the body is things such as poor diet, stress, medication, processed foods. These things increase inflammation in the body. So we want to decrease the inflammation. So reducing the stress, for example, eating more antioxidant rich foods such as um, fruits and vegetables being number one. Those things are going to help mitigate that inflammation within the body. So again, we're decreasing the inflammation in the body as we're addressing our thinning hairline. And make sure you decrease the inflammation in the body by a antioxidant-rich diet and reducing stress as well. That reduces inflammation. And then there are supplements that you can take that fights inflammation too. Supplements that have anti-inflammatory properties, such as saw palmetto, for example. You can take a supplement that is going to help fight the inflammation within your body and your scalp. So saw palmetto is a herb that actually helps to block the conversion of testosterone to DHT. And DHT is a hormone that attacks the hair follicle, causing it, causing uh, the hair follicle to miniaturize and your hair to thin out. Also, a supplement ashwagandha actually has anti-inflammatory properties as, as well, and they help again to decrease inflammation. So remember, decrease inflammation. You can do that through your supplements as well. So in addition to what you're doing here, you can also put things here. So these are topical products that you can put on your scalp to increase circulation. And not only do a lot of topical products increase circulation, but they also decrease inflammation. One, for example, is rosemary. There are actually clinical trials which show that rosemary, applying it topically to your scalp, works just as well as minoxidil. And minoxidil is the only FDA-approved serum for hair growth. But rosemary works just as well. Rosemary oil works just as well. And some say it works even better because it doesn't have the side effects, the, the irritated scalp that many times people who use minoxidil have. So you can apply rosemary to your scalp. Peppermint essential oil also has clinical trials that back up its, 
its properties with regrowing hair. Lavender helps with hair growth and, and reducing the inflammation. Then you can do things like a green tea rinse. Green tea is good with improving um, circulation as well. So when you're applying things topically to your scalp, that it actually does help to improve circulation. Uh, I have a product called the Curl House Follicle Stimulating Growth Drops that is a blend of about 15 plant-based um, ingredients, including rosemary and peppermint and nettle, and it's a whole list of fancy stuff, but even that helps to improve circulation to your scalp. So regardless of what you use, make sure that you are applying something topically to your edges to help stimulate growth to your edges. Now, what's going to help stimulate growth in addition to applying something to the scalp is after you apply it, then you massage it in. Scalp massages, OMG. They even have clinical trials that show scalp massages improve circulation so that your hair grows. There are different ways that you could do a scalp massage. Let me show you right quick. Number one, you can use your fingers just like this and massage that scalp. Or number two, you can use the Curl House Invigorating Scalp Massager. Take it to your scalp like this. Or if you're really trying to be fancy or lazy, you can use this one. Now, this is the real deal right here. And you can do this all over your scalp. Oh, it feels fabulous. And doing this on a regular basis will help to improve and maximize your hair growth. Okay, so you can pick which one. As long as you get your scalp massage in, that is going to help improve circulation so that your hair can grow in, the, in your hairline where it is thinning. Now, the last thing that I'm going to recommend to improve circulation, this is internal exercise. Yes, yes, I said it. Exercise helps to improve circulation to the scalp. So if you're not doing it already, incorporate some exercise into your daily regimen to help improve circulation to your scalp. And it's going to make you feel better too. All right, so I've told you the good. Now I have to tell you the bad and the ugly. So, if you are dealing with a thinning hairline, it is so important that you get help or you start to treat it sooner rather than later. So, of course, prevention is key, but if you have to address it, address it early because the longer you wait, the worse it's going to get. And it's a possibility if you continue to get certain types of type hairstyles, for example, traction alopecia starts off as a non-scarring alopecia. So non-scarring alopecia means your hair follicle is still viable. But when your hair follicle is scarred, that means there's no blood flow and hair will not grow. It may be a possibility that your hair follicle is no longer viable. Oh, gosh. That hurt my feelings to say, but I got to be honest. Because at some point, if your hair follicle is scarred, then that means no hair will grow. I'm saying things such as may because I don't know if everyone's situation is different and I don't want you to lose hope. That is why it is, it's also suggested that you see either a dermatologist or you can see a trichologist and we will be able to give you a more um, accurate recognition or a dermatologist will actually give you a diagnosis. Uh, in terms of whether or not your hair follicle is still active because they can actually do a biopsy. And if you are looking for a hair product line that will help you to restore your hairline where you have active hair follicles or a product line that's going to aid in hair growth and healthy hair, I encourage you to consider the Curl House Hair Restoration Collection. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, turn on your bell so that you do not miss a video. And until we talk again, stay fabulous.